Clumber, what's going Clumber's on? The death start? The death computer's not working? Death computer is not working. It's not picking up the Zoom. I don't know why. It's not It's not I mean, letting you have the camera. I'm going to text... Uh, Clumber. I'm going to text, like, Stefan and TGA. See if they know. Oh, there's... He's right behind you. Oh. <laughs> what's up? I'm, I'm good. But oh, his okay. cam... Clumber's camera is not on? I don't know if you're able... He's got, like, a laptop from, like, 1980. <laughs> <laughs> it's not from 1980. It's not fair. It's new. Uh, it's, it's no, it won't pick up. I don't know why. You're gonna have to be. You're gonna share a seat with Tommy and one butt cheek per. Uh, I can bring a chair in there. It's fine. I don't. I'm skinny. I don't take up a lot of space. <laughs> a, a snake draft first. <laughs> <laughs> be unbelievable. Actually. We got to do it. We got to do it. We know that much. Yeah, come on in. <laughs> Sounds like you want me to go in there. Yeah, just I'll, I'll keep working. All right. Bring a chair, though. We're not sharing a chair. <laughs> this is good. It's <laughs> a perfect two guys. Are we are you this is great. This is like a movie. <laughs> Tommy won't cheat off my. I know too. No, I was worried about the same thing. I'm <laughs> like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest. I promise. <laughs> All right, this looks beautiful. Uh, this is great. <laughs> are you guys ready? People did say we like would be like maybe not father and son, but like uncle and nephew, <laughs> <laughs> grandfather this is and grandson. So no. good. <laughs> All right, uh, are we are we good? All right, cool. We'll just get the show on the road. Uh, all right, Ben Manning, today is Monday. It is uh, July 25th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. It's Snake Draft Monday. We are joined by two guests today because Chief is out at the uh, Chicklets Cup. We are joined by, uh, I think, three-time guest, Tom Scabelli. And then we are joined by uh, new hire, Chris Clemmer. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Dave, are you familiar with Chris? I saw you on the 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 last game show, yeah. Yeah, so he yeah. is he is taking over our NBA vertical. Uh, we got him from the ringer, and he will be. Um, he's very welcome. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go yeah, Orlando you, Magic. Oh, very there, there you go. The Magic. Uh, I know them. And you play D three right at St. John of the Cross up there in Delaware. That's right. Yeah, I, I only played D three officially my junior and senior season. Okay. So yeah, I'm now, a D three kid. We actually played St. John in football a couple years ago to go to the national championship. St. John of the Cross. Do you like the ringer, Dave? You respect it used to be great. It used to be fantastic. Chris, I haven't background? read it forever. Yeah. I uh, think that's probably all bullshit and you just made that up, but No, new hire, Chris Clumber. I know I know he's a new hire. Um, nice to meet you, Chris. Nice Tommy. Nice to meet you. What's up? Scabelli, how are you? I feel yeah. we just had a nice conversation. It's always great to have you back. It's great to be back. Uh, I always love doing the snake drafts and I won last time, so I'm hoping to go back to back. You're right. Which one was it? uh awkward situations oh okay <laughs> is this yeah. awkward well, I, I would say sharing a room like this for a dog dog walk draft could be up there probably so for people that don't know if you're not watching if you're only listening um well subscribe to the youtube please if you are watching uh you're noticing that clemmer and tommy are on the same screen because clemmer <laughs> could not get his death star 1989 laptop working um so this is the first this is also time my contracts uh, that i get to be uh when i do the dog i get to be in the same room with somebody so i don't feel lonely yes no i appreciate that um so yeah so today's draft will be uh the game show draft because yesterday was a debut of the most dangerous game show which tommy is on and tommy it's a hell of a fucking series from what you've told me yeah it is i uh i think it's gonna like blow people away with how good it is when i've done surviving barstool seen Barstool vs. America. This is like, it's just like a, an actual reality show. Like this could just be on Netflix. Like the, the challenges, the way it was shot, the, ca the cameras it was used to shoot. I think it's going to be some of like the best stuff we've, we've honestly ever put out. It, it was like, it, I think it'll really impress. Like you don't even have to know what Barstool is. And I think people will be very impressed with the show. That's great. So go check out yesterday's first episode and uh, looking ahead. The next episode is Tuesday, correct? Tomorrow? Correct. So it's going to be Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then Tuesday, Thursday of next week. Beautiful. So not that much of a commitment either. Um, so, yeah, we're doing game shows today. And I must say, before we continue, though, last week we had a first time ever where uh, Rico and um, Chief tied 
with 12,000 votes, they're legitimately tied. It's just great. I mean, great. They tied. That's nice. The fact that we don't have something in place to then like settle a tiebreaker, very disappointing. I think one of the advantages of having a council in lean leadership is supposed to be the agility in moments of making decisions that you don't have to. It's not a democracy, Ed. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can make the decision yourself or use the council, as we've seen time and again, and we just let a tie happen. I, I just... Well, that's it, you know, but, but not yet. I, there could be something happening. So there's an opportunity for a runoff? Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're going to check it out. Maybe that we just have them. Sleepy Ed. Hmm? Sleepy Ed, just uh, sleep at the wheel up there. <laughs> it's just, I don't I didn't see it coming. I mean, how does that happen? 12,000 plus You votes. can figure that out. How? You tell you me. You do Dave. a runoff immediately. But I don't think, like, the people get jazzed for a runoff. You know I what I mean? Know. I want something, like, I... I, I wish we were in the, I, if Rico was here at BC, we the could thing, have him like run a race or something. Here's the thing. <laughs> like, you you know? don't know if they would get up for a runoff, but you know 1,000% they're not getting up for a tie. So might as well throw the runoff out there, and there's a chance that they would like it and that there's 15,000 votes. You're Bud Selig, bud. I'll what an idiot. That's who what you a are. Fucking I was gonna, Bud I was going to say on Red Line Radio last week that that's my one of my favorite All Star Game moments of all time is when it ended when they the tie. tie. Shocker! Yeah. That was that was unbelievable so controversy. It was great. Speaking of All Star stuff, I just want to say, Chris, you wrote a great blog about the worst All Stars of the '90s. I hope you got good positive feedback about it. That was that was a freaking oh, awesome thank blog. You. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun to write. A lot of like you know names from the past. If you're old like I am, and some of these uh, all star names are ridiculous. But uh, that was fun. That was fun to write. How old are you, Chris? How, how old am I? Yeah, forty two. Forty two. Got it. Mm -hmm. well, wow, I didn't know you're so close to Dave. Interesting. Um, Me, Dave, or Portnoy, Dave? Portnoy. It's gonna say I'm like no, not, not really. You. Uh, all right then, we could uh, we get the uh, show on the road here. We could uh, do road <laughs> on the show. I almost said uh, we could do order now. Uh, one through five. Uh, intern Kevin has a number behind his back. What number is it, Tom? Two. That's correct. Wow. Where do you want to? He didn't. You, he didn't want this. Uh, oh, I choose where to go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get, How many times have you been on the show, Tommy? I forget. I'm going to go third. I'm going to go in the middle. Okay. One through four. Uh, Clemmer. Three. That's that's also correct. Wow. Where do you want Clemmer? One, oh, yeah. two, four, right. five. <laughs> I'll, go, uh, I'll go two. All right. One uh, through three. Carl. Three. No. Dave. Four. No. You dumbass. One. Yes. Fuck. One through oh, three, Dave. Shit. I was writing Clemmer's name. Is it with a C or with a K? Because that's what I was going between. What are you taking, Ed? It's tough. I wish I knew where you were going to draft because then I would have a good opportunity to draft behind White Sox Dave, which is a favorable position. I don't know that it is for this one. I got a decent list here. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think ah, this is tough, dude. I'm gonna go one, I guess. You Fuck. guess? I didn't want one. Then one, take one. One or two. You. Why would you take one then? I don't know. I you had to. to take one. No, I made you. Uh, hands off the chess piece. I'll take one. You want? Oh, okay, one or two. You yeah. said one. Oh, it's two. Okay. Well, Dave still has to <laughs> yeah. say that. You know, you're, you're really. <laughs> uh, Dave, what do you want? I'll take four. All right, Carl. You're. Fuck. I think. Can we trade? You can't trade. No, 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 no. There's no trades allowed. There is really. I'll be honest. There is nothing better than picking after Dave in a draft. I know. Like on just, the wraparound. Sorry, Dave. I got one that I have to have, and then I don't care about the rest is of the draft. It, is it Uber Eats by chance? No. And <laughs> guess what? <laughs> Say it, Dave. It worked out in the end. What does that mean? Don't worry about it. All right. Um, Let's go right. on with the draft here. We'll, we'll Don't worry about last week. Here. The past before is we, the past. Before we do, though, I want to talk to you guys about the Game Time app. Obviously, the Game Time app is mm -hmm. the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Uh, Clemmer, I, I, I know you love the game of baseball. Uh, I know you, you're a big 95 Mariners fan. Is that right? You got right. Absolutely. Well, well, if you're in Seattle, you can type in you know Mariners game, and you're going to find the best uh, deals to last-minute tickets on the Game Time app. Um, it's a game time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports concerts and shows and they guarantee the lowest price. Uh, you can find MLB tickets for under $15 all in on game time. Yankees tickets as low as 14 
Red Sox 14, Mets 13, Braves 14, Cubs 12. You name your team, Game Time has the hookup and the deals for you to get out to the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And the best part is you get $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app, go to the account tab to create a login, and redeem code DOGWALK for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Uh, that's cheap for Yankee tickets. You guys are fucking awesome, Tommy. Yeah, that's for, and you'll notice that Met tickets are cheaper because they're lower class citizens. That's Ooh. not true. Ooh. Oh, I forget you're a Met fan. I'm a Met fan. Oh, right. cool. Yeah, just I thought I was going to like Clemmer, then I found out he's a sewer rat Met fan. So. Wow, Clum dog. I not not exactly what I want to say, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Finally. Sorry. The official game show draft. The only stipulation here, as we talked about, um, Tommy, it's a competition show kind of rules where you're competing for money or prizes. We thought competing for love, like The Bachelor, wasn't really yeah, that didn't really make sense. Yeah, I feel like the un, the uh, official definition is like an unscripted competition for cash prizes. Yes, okay. right. that's a great way to put it, Tom. Thank you. Um, all right, it's to me. I, I here's the thing. I, I I like this show. I think everyone likes this show, um, but it's not my favorite. But it's still got to be the number one pick because of its cultural relevance and the jingle and Alex Trebek and it's Jeopardy. Sure, sure. Uh, it's just yep. it's Jeopardy. I, I like. I don't like Jeopardy's not gonna fucking you yeah. know. It's not gonna. There are Jeopardy stands. Show. Yeah, I like Jeopardy. I think it can be argued as the one one. I think others can as well, though. I don't think there's a clear cut. I think it can, but I think it's a little cut above inarguable. Yeah, there? no, it's by far the number one. Jeopardy's the cultural no icon way number not, one. No yeah, it way is it I clear think cut so. number one. Yeah, I think you don't is. think so? I think it's clear cut. The you clear think it's clear cut? cut? Clear cut? Yeah. It's like it's like opening presents for when we did the Christmas draft. I think it, like it's, trick yeah, or treating it's by for far Halloween. and away had the best staying power, by far and away. But I don't think at its peak... It was ever like, holy shit, you can't miss Jeopardy. And There's the more fact. The peak with Jeopardy, though. What's it, that? It's, it's the, dura the duration of the show is what makes it so great. It was great. Of course, for yeah, so yeah. Long. But you it's, know, it's the same know, thing every day. And, yeah, like you got Ken Jennings and all that shit, like people making runs. But. So we're in high school, and my buddy, we're playing we're playing baseball, tribal baseball, and there's a guy on the team who's like, hey, we can go up to my parents' lake house. And I knew him from the baseball team, but we weren't like buddies or whatever. We didn't go to the same high school. But we were still in the same kind of like group friend in the summer. So you'd go to like different parties. I think he was from like Naperville. I just remember it was like, we're gonna go to this lake house for the weekend. It was like a group of guys on the 16 year old baseball team. And I don't like being in the sun. I don't like being on the sand that much. And it was like one of those things where the guys were out on the beach and the water and all that stuff. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna go in the house and like lay down and take a nap. And so at four o'clock, I watched a Jeopardy episode. At about 4.28 PM, the parents had come up from the beach and there were some aunt and uncles and friends, and they were coming up to start preparing dinner, make the fruit salad and all that shit. At 4.30 p.m., another episode of Jeopardy had come on, the exact same episode that they played at 4 p.m. I'm sitting in the kitchen with, my, with, these, with his parents, oh. just rattling off answer after answer That's, after that, answer that. after answer. Never told him anything. My reputation, the rest of that trip, I was like, you should spend more time with that Michael Stirk boy. He is very, very smart. <laughs> to this day, I see just Jeopardy, and I just think of just running the Heaney household. Just a genius. Oh, it was a great moment. In, until I the end, that. I got the like the final Jeopardy thing. I was like, oh, Max, this one out. I'm really good at this category. And they're like, you are so smart. <laughs> Nah, I just watched uh, my dad <laughs> used to do that routinely to his parents. Like he would go to another room, watch it, and then every night, like they just thought they had like a boy genius. On <laughs> that is uh, an advantage of Jeopardy. It is. Um, Clummer, anything else on Jeopardy? No, I mean I think it's culturally probably the, the most respected game show nationally. That put it, you'll have out there. Put it this way. Put it this way. One of the best quarterbacks of all time. Could have walked away and done that, and people thought that wouldn't have been crazy because it's such a big show and it's so yeah. like culturally important. Also, I think something that sets it apart from like a, a Wheel of Fortune or Price is Right or any I of those mean, is like you get to know the contestants. There. Yes, yeah, that's true too. I mean, like the contestants go on a run; it's not just a one and done thing. Yes, mm -hmm. Tommy, I'm gonna have to slap you on the wrist. No, uh, no tipping picks, even though. 
We know that. So that's not Tim and Those are just other game shows. That's a pick, Thomas. That's a pick, Thomas. Come Tom, on. We don't talk about eligible picks at all. We all know that they exist. No, Tom. We actually don't till they get drafted. This is a society. There is rules in this house, young man. That's how we end up down tangents when the thing hasn't even been picked. I am curious to who's This is your I, third time. This should be suspension worthy, I think. I'm but curious who White Sox Dave is going to pick, though, to, or who he's going to say what else is worthy of being 1 1. Uh, but regardless, uh, Clemmer, you're up. Yeah, I'm gonna take a pick. I think Tommy would like here, but it's one of my absolute favorite shows. It's uh, it's Survivor. Are you wow. a piece of shit? Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's why I went ahead of you in the thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I can't believe I was like, I almost yeah. took first. But I was like, nobody else is gonna fucking take Survivor. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Survivor's bad strategy incredible. from you there, Smokes. How about that? I was you got like, fucking I'm not gonna dusted live, there. I'm not gonna be able to live with myself. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the best. It's, it's the best game show. Yeah, I know. You know that? Yeah, I know oh, yeah, it no, is. Right. I just, yeah, I thought you might have an idea. Well, Chris, uh, are you yeah. trolling? Are you trolling? Like you? No, you, I love Survivor. Okay. I love, and I'm, you know, I watched Survivor since season one. I was a big uh, Greg fan from season one. <laughs> That's a really deep cut. Uh, but no, I think Survivor is absolutely the greatest. Jeff Probst is the best game show host. Um, it, it's just a fantastic show. Sometimes it's too gimmicky with some of the changes they make from season to season. But all in all. There is no better game show than Survivor. I might, I might leave this draft. I almost texted Eddie. I was like, I want a stipulation. I'm only doing this if I'm guaranteed to get Survivor. You could have. You had the first pick. I know. I didn't For think anybody. Spot. I was like, I almost was like, all right. I don't think it will go that early. So maybe if I even go fifth, then I could basically have that, and then the highest yeah. pick in the second round. I'm, I'm distraught. I don't even, I don't even care about anything else. It is stunning to Survivor to go Survivors. A great show, but it is stunning to have it go to. Of all time. But well, can I can I can I con it though? It the, the problem with a show like this is that it's it's very season dependent. Like there's been stinker seasons, that's a fact. But even the worst season of Survivor is better than any of these other game shows that are gonna get taken. I, I can't really disagree with that. I think you'd be happy having another Survivor fan in the office. You could look at all I am time. happy, but I mean it I'm really mad right now. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Um, Survivor off the board. What a what a robbery! He lets you join his room, his little pod, and you just snatch it right his fucking nose. Yeah, it's funny. Legitimately. Um. All right, Tommy. What are you gonna pivot to? You're up. Fuck. I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> um. I'll go. I'll go. Price is right. Uh, I feel like that's you know, one of the top three. I mean, Bob Barker, legend. Come on down, iconic. Uh, you know. Betting one dollar, I think. I think that's an easy first round pick. That uh, remember my nanny and Aunt Mella used to watch me on a Monday morning. Uh, that before school, we we would always throw on The Price Is Right. Sick day, classic. Yeah, sick you day. skip school. It's the perfect, you know, ten a.m. Yeah. game, whatever time it starts. That's where yeah. I remember The Price Is Right. I'm like, ah, fix sick today. It's just me and the couch and the TV. Right. Go to the fridge a few times an hour. <laughs> Maybe get up to take a leak here and there, and you got the prices right and Bob Barker on. You got the honeys opening up the the windows to like the new cars and shit. I think it's a great pick, Tommy. A new car. Oh. You know that's all fake too, by the way. Why? You got to pay the taxes on the car. So the people who win the cars, you're like, oh, you owe seven grand in taxes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they don't take it home. You're yeah, so, yeah, you, yeah. Did. you didn't. Know, I mean, yeah, I think my buddy great. was on it. A high school friend of mine. You ever see the documentary about the guy who like hacked the prices right? Basically, insane. That uh, guy is not. Like, he's more impressive than like any sharp gambler. He's more impressive than like he's more impressive than Einstein. Basically, whoever the Pythagorean yeah. theorem, whoever made that, mm -hmm. this guy who knew the des to the decimal of what fucking every Price is Right category was is you should watch it. I, I am very intrigued. I never knew this it's existed. Even. Awesome. It's it, on Netflix. Right now? It was at least. It, I'll, it I'll look it up. I'll figure it out. We'll talk about it it's later. It's very good. I feel like you got some of that in the Clummer. Some rain. Like you're just fucking, you got those uh, tendencies where you just photograph memory. Are you calling him autistic? No. <laughs> I've been um, calling him rain. Man. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Price is Right is the, like, it was the best show when you uh, were sick from school. Yep. Like, you know, you're just staying home sick. You had nothing to do. The Price is Right was the best show during the school hours for any kid to watch. Really good. It, that was my number three pick as well. And then you time. fast forward to the afternoon and you got Mari reruns. That is strong. I, I actually like this more than Jeopardy, but it's just, I don't know. I, you know, It's I, more entertaining than Jeopardy because there's all the frills and frails and yeah, different games. And Jeopardy is just like boom, 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 boom. Spinning boom. that yeah. big ass fucking wheel. Yeah. Plinko. Yeah. Like every, it was always, there's. 
there was something at, around every corner for you, you know, where it's like Jeopardy, if you didn't know the questions and if someone was kind of a, I don't know, a, a bad contestant, like it would just kind of ruin the show. Mm -hmm. But um, Price is Right Strong. I, I remember they played it on primetime, maybe like last year. And I don't know why they don't do that more. Like I'd watch some Jeopardy. I'd watch Price is Right at night. I wouldn't. I, I would if nothing was on. Yeah. Like if nothing I mean, was on. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like when yeah, they do like it like it. the Grand Ole Opry, or no, 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 never mind, never mind. I'm, my head's in a different spot. <laughs> it's all right. Um, all right, Price is Red off the board. Good pick. White Sox, Dave. So this is all right. Talking strictly game shows, and I'm not talking Survivor or any of the other like reality show game shows. Mm -hmm. I'm taking all those out because I haven't seen many of them. I have. I've never really watched Survivor actually. But from what That's I recall cool. growing up, at its peak. It was must watch TV every single week. I'm talking Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. That was like the TV show. It was insanely hot in the streets. Everybody watched it. Everybody was talking about it at school the next day. Like it obviously didn't have close to the staying power that Jeopardy had, but it had a much higher peak, I thought. And that was like when the internet started and everything. Um, I remember the one guy, I remember the first time someone won it. Um, and then a few people had won it since the first guy, obviously, one guy you used his last lifeline. Um, it was his phone a friend, and he knew the answer. He's like, hey, Dad, just calling you to let you know I don't need your help. I know the answer. I'm a millionaire. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, set up or not, I don't know if it was. Could have been fake. But at its peak, I thought Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was absolutely clear-cut 1-1, if we're just talking the highs of the show. I had a big crush on uh, Meredith Vieira as a kid. Thought thought she was a, she is? a MILF. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I know Regis. Yeah, is the, the yeah, it's just Regis, a crazy I mean, thing for yeah. you to say, Tommy. After after yeah. Dave no, just gave that time, slip, I, I know, I, I know, was, I know, I know. Yeah. Just what Dave was talking about right there. It's Regis. It's only Regis. What Dave's drafting is the Regis version. Right? Yes, I'm. T I'm drafting. He's talking about Regis Philbin. I know what you're talking about. And they, who wants to be a millionaire is is a great pick, but it is the only game show that tanked the network. Because ABC was running it four or five times a night, and then people got tired of it, and they had no other programming because they were spanking so much. And who wants to be a millionaire? And I did not know this. Yeah. The bed. Well, that's yeah. on the. Is this that's a fact? Where is this? Is this like... a fact? Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, they were, they were running like four or five times a night. It was at oh three oh four. It was right before uh, a couple of years before Lost, and Lost kind of saved ABC again. Really? So yeah, right around that time, two thousand one, maybe two thousand two, somewhere in there. Fuck yeah, Clummer. That's that's the type of insider knowledge we need for shows like this. I like that. Um, Millionaire was fucking awesome, dude. I mean, that was Regis was a perfect host. And is I, I'm that pretty, your? I'm pretty final sure answer? that's where final answer originated, yeah, yeah. right? Definitely, 100. Yeah, okay, final answer. yeah. All right, I just didn't know if it was previously done, but like, yeah. look at the cultural relevance in that. That's still, yeah. I mean, we use that on the dozen, you know. So it's same with the Lifeline. Yeah, yeah, same, lifeline, yeah. 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 Do I get a lifeline? Yeah, and it was it was three perfect lifelines. The audience, the phone a friend, and the 50-50. So uh, definitely a first rounder. That's a good pick, Dave. Um, Carl, you're up. I think I can win this draft. Yeah, you got you got you have a meatball down the plate for a perfect one too right here. Well, it's unbelievable. You I'll just I'll do I'll do one at a time. Go right ahead. I'm gonna take the first one I'm gonna take, I think, is a bigger show, more I think it's just bigger because it's just on all the time. And it's Family Feud. Yep. Okay, so you got to take Family Feud because it just hits. It doesn't matter who the host is. I mean, you go back. It's just like it's such a classic. It was what, Louis. Louis Anderson. Anderson, my yeah. Host. But he's yeah. your host? Yeah, that's my host. Mine was the one before Louis Anderson, who I can't remember his name. But then it was know. Drew Carey, and then it was Steve Harvey. So the guy, whoever, I'm, I'm blanking. Are you thinking of Ray Combs? Yes, thank you. <laughs> he, he, uh, he, by the way, he could kill himself. Oh, uh, tragically. If you want to look up Ray Combs, it's the saddest story ever. Thank you, Clummer. God damn it, Clummer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, it was Ray Combs. Now I'm looking that at that. That was your him. guy, huh? All right. <laughs> That's how I I shouldn't be laughing about the fact that he committed suicide. It's more about the fact that Clummer just levied such heavy, heavy, heavy news in the face of me not knowing Ray Combs. In any event, it's a—I mean, it's a, such a fun show to play along to, and it's—it's it's also the one game show out of all of these where you can really be like, "What a moron!" Like, "What a moron!" It really brings out, I think, some of the stupidest, mm -hmm. stupidest behavior, uh, and it's a classic, dude. I swear, like, it's—it's it's probably playing at any given time. It's—it's it's on TV. It's such a—it's a legendary show. My only con is they're kind of killing it now. 
It's getting a little. It, it, that's what I was gonna say. That's yeah, but it's not. But it's not even really. But like Steve, Har- Steve Harvey's almost overdoing it now. Do you guys feel that way or no? Yeah, I mean that's always that's like always a meme of like, you know, it, it'll, it'll be a question that is very much an obvious sexual answer, and mm-hmm. someone says it and he pauses and he's like, ah, I can't believe he just said that or whatever, <laughs> like something along those lines. Like, I don't know. But I, I actually just say I have a conspiracy about Family Feud where. Uh, I don't think they actually survey a hundred people for every question. I feel like you would know we would have you would know one single person who was interviewed in the right? Like you, right? Unless they just have the same a hundred people in like a room and just have I think here's like an entire like years worth of fucking You think so? Sheets to fill out. I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like you'd hear somebody, oh yeah, I was in a family feud survey one time. It could be those questions that they ask you to go on websites to like Go to, like you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we yeah maybe to it. like prove you're a human or whatever. Yes, the um, captures or right. whatever. Um, and also, reason- I almost did a Steve Harvey impression, and then I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that, so I stopped myself. Are we not allowed to do that anymore? <laughs> I mean, if it's a per- if it's an impression of a specific person, yes. Yeah, tell me, I'll yeah. tell you exactly why Family Feud is rigged, and it's because do you know how many categories you would need to survey a hundred people where like there weren't just like a litany of one answers. You know, like what's right. one word that comes to yeah. your mind? Like all the categories, it's like, oh, and six people said this would be like the last category. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You pull a hundred Ameri- like I shouldn't say a hundred people on anything. You're not going to get like five uniform answers. Yeah, You're yeah. going to get 40 answers. Yeah. That's a good point. Wrong. I don't That's know. A good Whatever. Point. It's still my pick in the first round. I like it. Yeah. I like Family Feud and it stands out too. It really just to stand good, out here. Good format, dude. Fast Money is like I could do Fast Money all day. Yeah. Yeah. Beep. All right, second mm-hmm. round. Mm-hmm. You know I gotta do it. Yeah, I'm taking Van, I'm taking Pat. Yep, Chicago guy, I'm taking Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, these these are really two mm-hmm. to me. Are this is the last of the heavy hitters. I wouldn't even put Survivor on these. To me, these were like the five that would have to go. I take, and I know Survivor is the best like reality based. I'm saying purely from like a game show contest. Yeah. That uh, Wheel of Fortune is the last one to me. Where if you took Jeopardy to me is one, but then if you said instead of Price is Right, I mean that's a pretty solid two. And then after that, I think it's pretty clear like who wants to be a millionaire. Family Feud, Wheel of Fortune, like those had to go. Those mm-hmm. had to go in the top six. Yeah, that's that's why I wanted five because I knew at the end here you were going to be able to get two really strong mm-hmm. shows, rather than I'm not going to be able to get a second pick that's that strong probably. Um, so that's that's a fucking one two. That's a good combo. Van, oh, do we want to talk about how hot Vanna White is, Clummer? Do you have any like any historical facts on how hot Vanna White is, or like how long Rock she's been size, doing? Maybe? I, I don't. Not off the top of my head. I mean, think about it though. Look at the longevity, <laughs> Vanna White. I mean, what is it? Thirty five years of doing that show, and she's still looking pretty good. I and mean, that's it's an amazing, amazing stretch. Mm-hmm. Dave, you Pat like Vanna? Sajak's kind of an ass. I, I got. You think so? Uh, so my my beef with with Wheel of Fortune, I watch Jeopardy a good amount, and I always immediately turn off Wheel of Fortune when I hear it coming on. But it is iconic; like it's a good first round pick. But I just hate how they uh, say, "Here are the stars of our show: Pat Sajak, Vanna White." It's like I don't know. You don't Alex Trebek didn't get introduced as the star of Jeopardy. The game should be the star, the contestant. So I just always thought that was diva behavior from Pat Sajak. <laughs> also, I. He was at a Dodger game one time that I was at, and everybody was like, oh, yeah, he's here all the time. He's an asshole. I, I think that was that. Yeah. I think that <laughs> Either I way. I hope it was, too. You just fucking yeah, sewer. Yeah, Jesus. Tom. Yeah. So Pat Sajak, uh, David Letterman, of course, was the late night host for CBS for many years. Before Letterman, it was Pat Sajak. Hey, Pat Sajak had a late night show on CBS in the late 80s, very early 90s. Did, did not know that. Um, we, did not do well. <laughs> oh, did it poor? We might it's, just yeah, have. He, he, would, he had to go back to Wheel of Fortune. We might just turn Clummer into a permanent part of this show. He could just be like the uh, information the guy, the encyclopedia. Guy. Yeah. yeah, the reality. Just yeah. work a soundboard with the mic. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Sorry, That's some guys. good info. Um, th- does does Wheel of Fortune? It, it's it's so it's so clear. But does it lack a little bit as a game itself? Though? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And wow. I'm terrible at it. That's by far the one. I'm I can't put any of those words together. Mm-hmm. I never get it right. Tough um, final round too. Oh, RLSTME. Yeah, tough final round. That's why do they pick? Those we do got to talk round. about. Maybe the all-time great South Park episode too, Randy. Of course, Marsh. of course. It is a great viral moments show of like people like talk about people being really dumb. Some yeah, oh guesses. yeah. One a few months ago, right? Where people I forget what it was, but it has like millions of people. Nate Nate always blogs. Isn't Nate the yeah. big wheel fortune yeah. guy? 
Yeah, yeah. There's uh that's the show where I was thinking about they'll take Wheel of Fortune on the road. They'll do it at like the Chicago Theater. They'll do it at the Grand Old Opry. Like they'll do it in like these huge, huge venues and I always like those ones. Mm-hmm. Also a great uh casino feature. I always like whenever I see <laughs> yeah, one, yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah. always playing a Wheel of Fortune at the uh Yeah. The best slot machine. Yeah, it's definitely one of the best. And who doesn't machines. like I mean, I know this is like a yak thing, but who doesn't like spinning a wheel? I mean, just so who doesn't does. yeah. That's and why it's on every game show. There's, there's nothing better than when the guys like when they spin it and they get the bankrupt and it's like, ooh, yeah. like, you, should, you should just solve the puzzle, man. Yeah, yeah. You should just solve. Got greedy, motherfucker. Yeah. Yep. Strong one too, man. Strong. White Sox, Dave. I'm going with the one reality show that I was very into. Not as much in the last six, seven years, but um, I'm going with American Idol. Mm-hmm. First, I'm, probably so- five or eight years, it was insanely popular it still is obviously um just kind of grew out of it for me personally but it's american idol i mean look how many superstars that that show is bred Ain't carrie it. underwood uh a handful of others obviously ruben stuttered remember him tommy he never did or, shit he, um i love love ruben stuttered it was like my i used to watch so i was gonna say though me and eddie debated this before like technically i don't think there's a cash prize for american idol it's like a just, recording deal a record deal Right. So you get a career right. out of it. That's money. <laughs> Are we going to seriously Fair. debate that? I'm, I know. I just was saying it's if it's worthy of discussion. Is it a talent show or a game show? Hmm. It's a competition. Hmm. You're going against other people. <laughs> I think it's more of for a, a recording deal. To answer your question, Chris, my opinion is it's more of a it's more of a talent show. But is a talent show it's a, a subcategory of a game show or does it stand alone? It's a it's a competition on talent mm. about singing it's a cut you're going head to head against people but it's not a game wow you're not playing a game it's a competition that's Correct. exactly what the text message said let's go to it let's go to it let's go to it let's go to it I hate to see this clummer competition shows where people compete for money and prizes that was ed's text to us i think it counts but i think it's worth debating i mean i think it's a terrible pick so I, I don't How's mind it a terrible counting, pick? but, uh, but so, I mean, it's fine, I guess, but like, it's not a game show, but it's fine. But that's not what our text <laughs> message said. I just read it. Competition shows where people compete for money and prizes. The end prize of the competition is a record deal. Didn't know you were a big American Idol guy. No. It's yeah. Not, I like it, Dave, Idol. I'm fucking with you. It counts. Okay. There is definitely arguments. I love for, it. Yeah. There's arguments, but you're a big Idol guy. Really? I used to be, yeah. I mean, I yeah, used to I used watch, to be big. Uh, yeah, I used to watch every season. Tommy, did you have what? cable as a kid, or did you just watch all network television? <laughs> no, we had cable. I used to watch Tuesday, Wednesday. I'd watch American Idol with my mom. Thursday, Survivor with my dad. Yeah, that, they're together. Like I didn't. I know. It's not <laughs> <laughs> you made that so <laughs> unnecessarily <laughs> awkward. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying but, that because uh, my parents are divorced? <laughs> What? Are you like rubbing that in? My parents are divorced. No, I'm not rubbing it in. It's what it sounded like. So, well, you're you're still doing it. You're in the majority. Most people's parents are divorced. What? uh, It's you know only in round two. Pretty dark. Talking suicide. Talking uh, divorce. But you know, this is a game show, man. Yeah, man. Not all. Not everybody wins. Um, yeah. I I never watched a single season, but it's. A lot of cultural relevance for people sure. like it. Yeah, Ruben Stoddard. I'm sorry for 2004. That's a good. That was a good song. Yeah, and obviously you got a. Uh, I mean, Randy Jackson, cultural icon for Come On Dog, like Saint Dog a lot. Then William Simon Hung. Cowell, William Hung. Um, what's her face? Never really did anything cool. She was Paul just Abdul. there. Yeah, yeah Paula Paul Abdul. Abdul. You got a Paula Abdul do, fact do, for us, Clummer? Oh, yeah, she was a L.A. Laker cheerleader before she became a, uh, a big-time singer. Are you we, Are you on a dozen team yet or no? <laughs> uh, yeah, I am going to be, yeah. Oh, that's foiled out, right? Is it not out yet? But maybe not. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just saying don't say your teammates in case. Uh, in I don't really even 100% know them, but we'll see. Oh, wow. All right, well. Um, all right, American Idol off the board. Tommy, you're up. I don't know where I feel like there's no more obvious order of things, you know, like I feel like at this point, it's kind of just preference based. And yeah, I'm not like picking based on what I think could still be there because maybe someone even get picked. Um, I'm going to go pyramid. Hmm. I like pyramid. 
Uh, Donny Osmond was the version I watched. I, I just like the, the game, like the, it's like, I guess it's kind of like charades with your words actually can't say the actual word. I, I, I just like the, the game format of it. It's come back with like the impractical jokers on a new version. Everyone knows I love the impractical jokers. Not everyone knows that, but I do. Uh, but I'm going pyramid. Is it, is Michael Strahan do it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Strahan does. Oh wow. He's the Donny Osmond. The hundred thousand dollar pyramid. I never really got it. Anybody, anybody had nope. anything on this? Nope. Clummer? Oh yeah. I mean, Dick Clark was the host when I was a kid. That's what I know the pyramid as. And Dick Clark was a great host. Uh, it was an awesome show in the eighties. It's a fantastic game. Um, it's a, that's a really strong pick. I couldn't even tell you how it's played. I've seen it, but I just don't. Yes. You basically have to describe a word without saying the word, more or less. It's two people, and it's a category, and it's a... Uh, it's a celebrity and a regular person. Right. Usually teamed up. Sounds like Pet. Mm, never mind. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, pyramid off the board. Clummer, back to you. Yeah, I completely agree with what Tommy said. Now it's just about preference. Like the the heavy hitters are all gone. Um, like the first five picks you guys had were my first top five. So I'm just gonna go with the show I really like. It's a deep cut. Uh, but American Gladiators is fucking awesome. Yep. I, I'm, oh I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna roll with that. I had it down on my list because I thought no one else would really touch it. But American, that's perfect fucking shitty TV. I loved it. It was awesome. Like they would have different like. Uh, you know, things they would compete in each, you know, they had sort of five, six, seven events. And the last one was this like crazy obstacle course they had to get through. Uh, and it was always, they had, and they treated like a sports program. Like they had, uh, like they had a play-by-play -play guy, had a color guy. And it was always good. I think Larry Zonka was the color guy for a while. Was he? Was I did not know better. that. That's yeah. awesome. Um, it was really good. It was a really good show. And uh, you got to know the gladiators after a while. It was almost like they were WWF characters, but they were, they were like, they were entertaining and charismatic themselves. It was a always entertaining watch. It was, it was popular when I was like nine, 10, 11 years old. And like, if I saw an episode on now, I totally would. Did the remake work? Uh, did you like the remake at all? I watched a couple episodes. It didn't hit the same way. Yeah, that's disappointing because you could even watch reruns now and the old show still... It was it was a great show. Like you just, I think everyone wanted to do that. Uh, what was it with the tennis balls? What, yeah, what was yeah, that called? with the oh, cannon yeah. thing. Yeah, what was that? That called? was the best one. Yeah, I don't know. That that'd be they. We should set that up. Like I don't know why, Barstool should have like an amusement park, and that should be part of it. And we should just do that for contestants who want to do it. Um, it's a good pick though, Clummer. I like it, but I, you know, that, I mean, if Dave was going to take it, then it was smart. But I think you could have got it later, maybe. I thought I could have gotten it later. Yeah. So. Um, all right, American Gladiators off the board. Uh, it's to me. I have two picks. My first one I'm going to go with. I, I've never, I've never turned on an episode of this. It's New Age, and this is one of the first New Age ones that I really enjoy. Uh, but I've never, not, I've never turned off an episode of Deal or No Deal. It, it's, it's a perfect. Turned on or off an episode? Never turned it off. Like when it's on, I'm oh. like. I got, I'll watch yeah, the whole thing. You know, it, it really is a great mindless TV show. Probably would have been a decent hangover draft pick. Um, just opening cases, the call from the banker. Worst part is the fucking cliffhangers. Um, and Howie Mandel is pretty strong, I think, too. Yeah, the fact that, like, he only just knuckle touches the contestants because he's a germaphobe. I remember that being a thing. Yeah, Deal or No Deal is great. I thought about taking that there, but I just... I don't know. I have no idea. Like I said, the preference of things. A lot, a lot of hot women on there too. Yes. Yeah. TNA. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched it in a minute. Did they uh, <laughs> less hot in the women like they have been doing over the last handful of years? What do you mean? Uh, Are there fat chicks on there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't. I haven't really seen any new I recordings. Know. I would hope not. It's a you know a last great American institution. I have not seen, um, but it's. Uh, it's What's wrong? I mean, that's what they do. Just an insensitive comment. It's not insensitive. It's I asked a question. It's not a comment. It's a question. You saying asking questions can't be sensitive or I, what, did you just rule you said out it was the an, sensitivity of the question on the basis of you asking it? You said it was an insensitive comment, and I said it wasn't a comment. I was asking a question that that I think is valid. All right, it was an insensitive question. Clamor thoughts. Uh, it's not, it's fine. It's okay. Uh, I'm not, I'm not really a fan of the newer ones. I'm sure my list is going to be mostly older ones. Um, I don't know. It, it's okay. It, it's, it's, it's tough to, I don't like games where I don't really know like what's like you have to guess with the briefcases and stuff like that's, 
I like when I can just answer a question. Yeah, yeah I hear you there. Because this is like a show of 100% pure unadulterated luck. Right. Like there's no skill involved in it. Yeah, but you know? it's like it's it's, I, it's, it's like it's, it's like in, roulette though. You know, yeah, it's yeah, legitimately it's, like roulette. It's, like, it's it's intense and everything. Yeah. It's a good show. I like playing roulette. I don't want to watch other people play roulette. Yeah, true. I I just feel like I I legitimately feel like you're gambling when like we watch it. But um, what is it? You all, got a one in like thirty shot at. It's a also bucks? a good slot. Uh, one in twenty five. Is that years. what it is? Twenty five. I think it's twenty five. 26, 26, I think. 26, maybe, yeah. And then it's like, are you going to keep your briefcase? Or not? It's a great concept. A Who great concept. is the fucking guy upstairs? The banker? Yeah, has he ever been uh, like Asher's revealed? definitely a fake person. No, because you can see the shadow. It looks, it's not like a robot. It looks no, like I know, but like, I would assume that like they act, they have like a computer program like calculating like what the Oh, no, are. I know that. But like there has oh. to be a person back there. Yeah, I guess. What do you think? Like Doug's is hanging out up there or something? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Um, all right, I need another pick. Um, wow. A lot of stuff I like still alive. Whew. Damn, I kind of regret taking deal or no deal because now I'm in a tough spot. Um, I'm going to take Supermarket Sweep. Supermarket Sweep is legendary. Um, I, I don't know how the new one is doing, and also a, new, a different iteration on the Food Channel has kind of like cucked it a little bit too. But OG Supermarket Sweep, just seeing people fucking race down an aisle, was electric. So can't say I ever really got into it personally. Well, I just think it was funny because I, I remember the old one, the strategy that just load up the turkeys. He's getting turkeys, Bob. Yeah, and it's just turkey, 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 diaper. Yeah, you know, high. Uh, uh, like high price, I, I, that, the strategy was just getting the most amount of shit, right? Uh huh. So it really was just people going back to the, like the meat section and just the idea though of you running through a supermarket. Like they made a contest, they made a game show out of exactly out of like an everyday. Yeah. That Amazon has obviously put out of business and will continue to put out of business, but mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. Ed. Yeah. Amazon Sweep would be a lot less entertaining to just adding <laughs> stuff to their online cart. <laughs> just click the most. Um, what do you guys think about Supermarket Sweep? The problem with Supermarket Sweep is it's not rewatchable like over and over and over again. Like uh, maybe rewatchable is the right word, but like for instance, like I can watch Jeopardy five days a week and not get bored. But if I watch Supermarket Sweep after the third or fourth day, I'm like, all right, yeah, I can yeah. just throw more fucking shit in the cart. And, you know, like it, it's very repetitive. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I've never watched it, so I, I can't. No? So. Oh. I can see. I know the premise of the show, and I I agree without ever having really watched it. So, yeah. I know it's definitely very culturally relevant. It's yeah. fine. It's not bad. It's just yeah. For the third round, watch. I think it's fine. No, it's a great show. We're, we're, I, we're, we can't just shit on Super. No one's shitting on it. Yeah, and you're not shitting on it, but I feel like it deserves more credit. And you cheated in it when you did it. I didn't. She, she handed it to me. You still cheated. She handed it to me. Um, you could have said no. Um, all right, Supermarket Sweep off the board. I hope I made the right call because there's another one I really wanted. Uh, Clemmer, you're up. Uh, I'm going to take another one from my childhood. Uh, go with Double Dare. Right. Uh, this was on Nickelodeon in the late 80s. There's um, two kids competing. It eventually became Family Double Dare, um, but it was two kids competing. The host was Mark Summers. He was fantastic. Very good game show host. And uh, the kids have to answer questions and we, they, uh, they could dare yeah. themselves to do like uh, physical challenges. And um, and the challenges were pretty creative. It was like messy, and it was oh, wasn't the most fun game ever to you play. You had to like, pick was, the giant nose and shit. What's that? You had to pick the giant nose and like pull the pick whatever. The nose. Yeah, you had to like go through like a giant ice cream yeah. sundae to get an orange flag. Yeah, it like, was it was awesome. I love that show. I mean, you're ten years older than me. Um, it was it was awesome. I loved it. Um, we interviewed Mark Summers a couple years ago when we had the Sirius station here. Good guy. Um, well, a voice of our childhood. So I love the pick. I'm pissed that you picked it though, because I wanted to break the Nickelodeon mold. Yeah, I mean, this is my, this will be my only Nickelodeon pick, uh, most likely. Uh, a spoiler, but uh, Double Dare is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely great, great yeah. game show. That's a great pick. Double Dare was on my board. Um, you're right. Mark Summers is underrated, and he was a great interview too. He told us some really good shit on our uh, radio show. Uh, did you He's ever a great watch? moment with Burt Reynolds 
uh, on the old Johnny Carson, I believe it was, or maybe it was Jay Leno, but uh, it's on YouTube. But Burt Reynolds and Mark Summers come like this close to getting into a fight. It's wild. Hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, YouTube, uh, Burt Reynolds, Mark Summers. It, it's worth it. It's very fun. No shit. I'm gonna have to watch that. Uh, you never seen it, Tommy? I assume. Yeah, the local format, Tom. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Double that. Yeah, I know you like it. Yeah, it's a great yeah. pick. Mark Summers, obviously. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Uh, Tommy, you're up. I'm pumped this lasted to the third round. I thought this had first round pick or second round pick potential. I'm taking Cash Cab. I feel Ooh. like Cash Cab is just, it's like a culturally relevant. But it's, it's also what sets it apart is that people don't know necessarily. That, like, you don't know you're going to be on a game show. Like, until you step foot into that cab. Like, it's a it's a dream of everybody. I mean, the show's, I think, well, they brought it back. I think it's off now. But a dream of everyone to step in a cab and and be on Cash Cab. Like, I think... It's a it's a very unique concept for a show. Um, I've always thought it'd be funny to do like as a prank to get into a cab and pretend you're on cash cab and like be like, oh, my God, like, what's the first question? And just really confuse the driver. And no matter how much he insists, you're very clearly not on cash cab. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> cash cab, I think, is uh, it's a great one. It was a good show. Um, I remember at one point, like, I don't use taxis unless I'm in New York City, honestly, anymore. But um there was a point when I'd be downtown and I'd be like hoping every time I step foot in a cab, I'm like, please let it be the cash cab. Please let it be yeah. cash cab. Yeah. Carl, anything? I like cash cab. I, I've been suggesting that we do a cash cab iteration for years around this office. You did. You have actually. Yeah, I've right. been up our ass about we got to do trivia. And, and what would happen is I'll drive the van and White Sox Dave's in the back and we'll have fucking somebody can write the questions. And it's like, are you smarter than White Sox Dave? And we'll run the shitty van. We'll drive it around. Let's Chicago. do it. I mean, dude, I think I wrote I like wrote emails and like told it like was like, hey, guys, what do we think about this? I think if it was like three grand, we'll get the cab. I think we can get it expensed. I think we could do this. Never really so went be the anywhere. tough part would be Never getting really the cab. Went anywhere. Eh, but it's you're just playing, get a fake one. You want to have a van go around the city and then lure people in, telling them they'll have money into a van with two men in it? That's the plan? Yeah, basically just like, yo, and like okay. announce it. Just like, hey, we're going to be giving rides around Wrigleyville today. And if you guys need a ride, like keep your eyes peeled. Okay, for, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, keep your eyes peeled for the bar. I think Chicago we're on something bus. here. And then, and then you know what you're getting into when you see the, you know, so it's not a little bit of a production workaround here. We don't have the resources of Cash Cab. You know, we can't play the on, uh, anonymity. Did I say that right? Anonymity. I think you did. That's a tough one. Anonymity. Clemmer, anonymity. can you say that word? Anonymity. It sounds like the beginning of Silence of the Lambs, to be honest with you. But it's, it's a good idea, though. You should roll it. Listen, I'm not even wear people's skins, all right, buddy? All right. <laughs> no, just, it just sounded familiar. That's all. I'm sorry. You like Cash Cab, Clummer? Fuck you. It's all right. Uh, fun <laughs> fact about Cash Cab. Uh, in the pilot episode, the uh, the host, the, with the original host, uh, got killed. It was our like, head oh on the What? No, I'm just fucking. Oh, 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 dude, that was good. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. He got me. I was gonna say there's no way there would have been like 13 seasons of Cash. Cab. I he got me. <laughs> You believed him, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. yeah. I mean, how, how am I not? He could have. You didn't even have, have. You shouldn't have told us you're kidding. We would have went with that. He's got some. He's got some tricks in that bag. This Chris Clummer. Uh, I never seen it much, but sounds like people like it. Uh, White Sox, Dave. So Clummer did take Double Dare. That was number two on my list for Nickelodeon game shows. Next to Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yep. I was praying that it got back to me. I had Double Dare right behind it. I think there's a third that's in contention that you could argue with either of these two. But for me personally, it was Legends of the Hidden, Hidden Temple. I did tell, drunkenly tell a college buddy of mine that I was on the show. I was in Orange Iguana. And I never, he thought it was the coolest fucking thing ever. Like asking me all these questions that I couldn't answer. I would just lie through my teeth about it. And to this day, he thinks that I was in Orange Iguana. Well, you just outed yourself. So well, he doesn't. Least. I know he doesn't listen, so we're good there. It'll get back to him maybe. What's his but name? I've held it. I've held it for 15 years. Uh, you actually heard it yesterday if you saw me talking to the Miller Light girl because I went to college with that girl. Oh no! And shit. we were talking about him. Shout yes. out! Shout out! Shout out! Um, every kid's dream was to go on the show. Silver snakes. Every kid's dream. Purple parrots. One of the most was, creative game shows you'll ever find. Yeah, he had the the dude that the statue dude. What was the name? I don't know. Do you remember what was the statue's name that like I talked? Too. Yeah, I, I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Do you remember this one, one time? It was a little bit. Yeah, I know. It, this. I mean, I wasn't. I don't think born when it was originally airing. But you were, I remember yeah. like seeing repeats. What year were you born? 
96. Yeah, so you would have been too young for this, I'm sure. It's probably done by the time you could like create. Thoughts. I remember, um, like I've obviously heard of it. I, I think I've seen repeats or or Nickelodeon did because I remember being like eight, nine, and like in the morning before school, it was something very similar. It might have just been repeats or they brought it back in a new way, but it was like a temple and people running through it and all that shit. So uh, I, I liked whatever show that was. It looks like it was on the CW from October 2021 to January 2022. Um, I what was that? I don't know. We must have missed it. It only was on for three seasons, which is kind of well, it, three seasons. Old Mac is like Old Mac, yeah, Old Mac, Old Mac. yeah. Um, great fucking show. Great, Dave. I like the pick. Uh, Carl, you're up. <laughs> uh. All right, I've got two. I got two picks here. Um, I think I might be getting a little cute here, but I want to take this one here in the third round because I think it could win you the draft. I, I, I think it could sway people really late in the fifth round. I don't want anybody to take it in the fifth round. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive here in the third round. I'm going to reach. I'm going to take American Ninja Warrior. Mm. I think it's just a very unique show that stands out. In the basis of it, because I don't, I want to take the internet. I, I wish I could take the old version where they had like the highly stylized American game show announcers over the top of like the Japanese show. Clummer, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you guys know what I'm talking I about? I think you're oh, saying yeah, yeah, two yeah. different shows. I know that. I so it's like we created more. I think the I want, Americanized one. I want that. Right. I want the funny one. Oh, with the Japanese people. Where I don't know if that was a was that a game show? Yeah. I don't know. Fuck. I didn't watch it enough. No, but I'll it's just hilarious. take American Ninja Warrior. Okay, I'll just understand. take the class. I'll just take. I'll take the yeah, one yeah. we then adopted. It in might May. be. I'm not saying it's not, but um. Um, it's an okay show. But I just think it's out there. I think I'll it's one that's it. going to catch people. I, like you'll see it. You'll you'll throw it on for like 20 minutes. I'm for not the like, commercial. Yes. When it goes to a commercial, then I'm done. But I'll watch it. Like if it's on this afternoon and I get home and I flip on TV and I'll go to it. I'll watch a few obstacle courses. Then it hits commercial. I'm out. But it's a good show. I think it's good enough to like be a good mix because my fourth round pick, like it's more about the balance here in the, on the board for me. But uh, I think American Ninja Warrior stands out and stands alone, even if it's a bad pick, even if it's a bad show. Thoughts? Smokes. I had it on my board. I, I like it. Yeah, I. Uh, it's not like my one of my favorites, but it's if it's like if it's on, it's good to just throw on and be like, oh yeah, these are people doing a cool obstacle course. And those guys are fucking free. Yeah, it's just hard not to like not to watch. Like someone going right. through the temple, it's like you're gonna watch. Can they do this? Yeah. You but am I to loyal see? to it? No, I'm not no, loyal to yeah, it yeah, at yeah. all. Like I don't like I, I don't like I also think it hurts that you don't the people are kind of you they're hard to root for, yeah. right? Yeah. Like I mean so like Yep. It's like all kind of But old. I do this is more of like a def, well, like I don't want Dave taking this wide receiver in the fifth round. Because I just think it's it's too it's too dangerous for you guys, so I'm taking it here in the third. Yeah, there's like gyms that have this shit now. Yeah, because my fourth round pick's fucking awesome. What is it? And it, my fourth round pick is good enough to be a second round pick. What is it? Stump the Schwab. Oh no, shit! All right, Stump the Schwab. It's like the existed. only yeah. like yes, I think they only have like one venture into game shows or into like contest yeah. trivia, and this is our first big sports trivia show on the board. I think almost like there's some in Chicago locally that we like that you'd be crazy to draft. Oh, no, you can't draft. You those. can't draft. Yeah, that. yeah. But that's like really what it's it on is. My board. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> they have them for all the local CSS yeah. syndicates. Yeah. We'll talk yeah. about that in honorable mention, I'm yeah. sure. Or um, maybe in the fifth round. But yeah, so I'm taking Stump to Schwab. That was a good one. And Schwab's like a no, legend. No one ever fucking beat him other than like a uh, small handful. He's lost. Say. He's lost, though. No, mm -hmm. he has lost, but it was like. Not till season three, maybe. It was like a, a minuscule amount of people. I think he tweeted something about Barstool recently. <laughs> Do you like to pick Ed? He, yeah, I love this show. It was so fucking show. hard. He was impossible to beat, so I like would get frustrated. And that was when I like knew every sport top to bottom instead of just like a couple of baseball teams now. But um, he was like, like he was a fucking freak. He was their stats, actual like stat preparer dude at ESPN, if I recall correctly. Something like that. Yeah, that's how he got into programming because yeah. he was the behind the scenes. The, guy. the way like, he was behind the scenes. The way guy, Clemmer's yeah. just dropping all his bombs yeah. on us, and it turned out that if like Clemmer's like a super knowledgeable guy, and then all of a sudden he he had a, you had to be Clemmer. And stump the Clem. Yeah. Well, he reminds me of uh, Chris Kampka out here. 
who does off CSNs like Tommy? Is that too? Is it? it do you remember the show at all? Do you know the? Show, do, you, do you remember Stump Schwab? I know it's Chris Berman, right? But no, I, mean, I don't know. Uh, it's not Chris much Berman. else. No, it's not. It's Chris not Chris Berman. No. no. Oh, then fucking, I have no idea. I can see why you're saying that though, because like he would do the Schwami thing, where he's like, "Oh, Schwami." Uh, that's not that's what Berman. I'm yeah, because then it's like, "Oh, Stump the Schwab." No. Schwab was like a guy who worked at ESPN who actually does kind of resemble Chris Berman. He's like a big, burly, old, salty guy uh, who just sat behind the scenes. And then they were like, God, you know everything. Like we should do, we should give a trivia show where like people try and outsmart you. And it literally like it was pretty. Point, it was it went a very long time until he lost. Or, or the oh, guy okay. was just like unbelievable. He was basically the computer that Ken Jennings couldn't beat in Jeopardy. Gotcha. I've definitely heard I've definitely heard the phrase before, like around here, like, oh, Stump the Schwab. And I just in my head, I've always assumed it's yeah, you you touch too young for it. If someone was able to secure his number, he would be an ultimate lifeline for the dozen. Oh yeah, Ooh. for sports, fuck yeah, ultimate. He'd be. We gotta get Schwab. Yeah, the guy just knew everything. I just I looked. Well, never mind. I looked what, what it was. Um, no, I'm gonna pass on. This. Okay. No, 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 no. What? He was. So I was looking. I was like, he was tweeting at something. It looked like he responded to Dave's. Uh, Roe versus Wade video. Oh, no. And, but it, I, I don't know what side he was on. His comment was tough to decipher. <laughs> What's the comment? What? I, it was, it just said on my money. I don't, no one really knew, but I remember seeing that in the moment and be like, oh, how about the Schwab going from fucking, it's just funny because hardcore sports guy going into that. But I don't know like what, mm -hmm. I have no idea what he meant. If you, you could find the comment, if someone could decipher it, because he's arguing it later on, but neither here nor there it was just, Culturally, I, I mean, haven't thought of the Schwab in a while. And now we got back to back yeah. Schwabs. Great show, though. Great name. Great show. Good pick. Um, White Sox, Dave. I'm getting down to Slim Pickens on my list. I'm going to go with one that I would binge watch when also when I would fake sick. This one being more on the uh, edgy side, I would say, not just like Wheel of Fortune stuff like that. I'm going with Fear Factor, Fuck. Joe Rogan. That was the one I was between. Um, I could never be on that show in a million years because I, my stomach is just I got a pussy ass stomach, um, but I would watch it. I would I would binge watch like ten episodes a day when I would cut class. What did you say, Tommy? I, younger. I said that was going to be my next pick uh, if, if it didn't get taken. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely like uh, very culturally relevant. Like everyone knows Joe Rogan, Fear Factor, eating bugs. I didn't like uh, you know I, I like stuff with more strategy and stuff, but right, Fear that Factor, just takes me I mental. Now, yeah, but I will say like about the most dangerous most dangerous game. It, it's very similar. It's like Fear Factor and Survivor, kind of combined. So I can now relate to these uh, Fear Factor people. Ooh, mm. How about that? How how did it taste? We'll see. <laughs> uh, you a Fear Factor guy, Clummer? I take it no. Not really. I, I think Joe Rogan. I I knew Joe Rogan first in news radio. So it was kind of wild when he did Fear Factor. I was like, this is, you know, he's just doing this game show. He, he, he I watched a few episodes. He's very good uh, if you're, you know, hosting the show. And uh, it's all right. But, like, if I'm going to watch people eat gross food, I'm going to watch, like, Survivor or, you know, some, something like that. where There is an element of strategy beyond just eating the gross food. To be fair to the show, though, it was three rounds. And the first and the third round were usually something, like, action-based, like, mm -hmm. like, physical. The second round was usually the eating portion or, like, the underwater portion or whatever. Um it's a great mindless TV show. Yeah, it's just mindless TV. This was, I was between this and Supermarket Sweep. I went with Supermarket Sweep, so I think it's a good pick. I was hoping it'd get back to me, but apparently had no chance if you were going to take it too. But, so I'll take my – am I up now? Yeah, you're yeah. up, Tommy. Uh, I'm glad I got this one. So this is one that I like is a good mix of pure trivia and also Survivor-style stuff, The Weakest Link. You vote people off. Um classic show one of my favorites growing up uh you know you are the weakest link has just literally become like a, a catchphrase you know in, in modern society which i think is important you got to have something that's like still um culturally relevant so i i'm going the weakest link I, I i love it i think it's very underrated actually i was down to these yeah. two yeah i think it's very underrated and that the woman who hosted what's her name she was fucking great the Jane Lynch did some. No, but that was, that was the new. Yeah. Let me see. Forget maybe. Let me see her first name. I know you're. Anne, no, the first. Anne Robinson. The first iteration right? had a woman, a British woman. You are the weakest link. Yeah, that's the Come one on. I remember. Uh, that would be Anne Robinson. I think you're right. Damn, Clem. What? Yeah, she was ruthless. Yes, she was. Yeah. 
very cold woman. Yeah. 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 No, I, honestly, I think I really think it's an underrated show. You didn't seem like you liked it. I just, I think the catchphrase ruined it. Really? Like the, you are the weakest link. Like it was almost too. Not a fan of the Brits, huh? But who said that? <laughs> who said that? Ed? The intelligence they provided and just like they're don't do that, Ed. Don't do that. I like the Brits. They're good people. Take long lunches. I'll tell you that much. Do they? <laughs> oh fuck! You ever work with Brit? I don't think so. Oh my god! They'll go out to lunch at eleven thirty and come back at two thirty. Have four That's beers. Amazing. Fucking, they don't do shit. I man. love it. <laughs> Worked in public accounting with a couple of these guys. They came over on an exchange program. They were like, "Yeah, we're in management." I'm like, "What does that mean?" They're like, "We don't open Excel." I'm like, "I'm not doing all the work." They're like, "Uh, yeah, you're kid." <laughs> it's good. Brits, you went on the Wicked Slink Clummer. It's all right. It, it was fine. Uh, I, I didn't love the host. Like she's just too cold. Like something like who wants to be a millionaire was fun because Regis was so warm, and like and it was just a fun back and forth where this felt very like you know antiseptic and it just felt it said like it just didn't feel like a lot of fun watching. That's why I liked. It, you know, it was like different from the fun ones where it was like no, this lady hates you. Like you, you should feel like shit if you get voted off. Cutthroat. Whatever. Yeah. She was. She was a big part of why that show was big. Like a lot of these, you could just rotate, but she was. She was part of its success for sure. Uh, Clemmer, you're up. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of torn between my brain and my heart here. So I'm going to go with my brain, I guess. And because this is the best best show that's still out there. Um, it's something I don't, I haven't watched every season, I'll admit, but I've watched a couple of them and they're very good, is uh, The Amazing Race. Hmm. Um, it's, just, it's just a really good show. Uh, and like I said, I, 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 don't, I haven't watched every season, but the ones I start, I always finish. And it's something I'd, I'd love to go back to if I was like had the flu or something and needed to watch you know twelve hours. I would enjoy that and not not be bored. It's a great concept too. It's one of those so that I'm I've just... never seen, but I feel like I should have. I, I I believe that it's good, and I know I'd like it. I where do you stand, Tom? I, I feel like you. So you know, I'm a big Survivor guy, so I prefer Survivor. I've never watched it. This one hits a little. Home. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but I'm just going to say it anyway because fuck it. Uh, I was a little bit in casting for The Amazing Race, and uh, what? I'm pretty sure that's what uh, the show that we were being casted for. Really? I, they wouldn't tell us the name of it. I'm pretty sure that Ed and I, like two oh, years probably, ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. we um, went through like four interviews for it. Oh, they, wait, you were interviewing for a show that you wouldn't know what the show they was? They wouldn't tell us. Yeah. I don't think it was The Amazing Race. It, that it sounds uh, like you guys got I've never seen The Amazing <laughs> Race, but everything I've heard about it, it always made me think that it might have been The Amazing Race. Uh, yeah, and then and then we got, it was it was me and Spider were paired up, uh, and, and we just didn't make the cut. So that uh, it, hits, it hits a little close to home for me. But I had never watched it, and then when I was watching it, I was like, all right. Like watching it while I was like going through like the interview was like, all right, I don't know. It just didn't really do it for me. Yeah. But if they want to have me on, I'll go because why not? Mm -hmm. I feel a little, I, I wonder how smart of a strategy was for me to pick that. That's my second Mark Burnett produced show that's on CBS. And I just wonder if I'm like not, my uh, my picks aren't, don't have wide enough variety there. But Well, you came back around after Double Dare and American Gladiators Club. So, you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're hitting a lot of eras at the, at the very least. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. It wasn't a pick I love making, um, but it is the best in the board, so I got to pick. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, it's back to me. I need to round out my draft. I, I, ha I mean, I have to take the show that I've watched like every season of since I was in eighth grade. Um, the challenge. It's some seasons are better than others. It's got that survivor factor. Um, you really kind of got to be in tune. Well, back in the day with like the real world and everything, but. Uh, there's a reason why it's been on for, you know, over 20 years. And, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a great show. It's kind of falling off now, though, but I like the uh, old – I like the new OG seasons. But they're, like, everywhere now. It's on CBS. It's all over the place. So, mm. yeah, the challenge. Yeah, you've been you've been a challenge guy basically forever. If I had to, like, identify a couple things that, like, make Eddie who Eddie is. And I'm um, like media wise, I'm, I'm throwing the challenge in the mix. I'd probably mm -hmm. throw the challenge in the mix in the same way I'd throw the Chicago Bears, dude. Or the same way, like when I really? think of you, it's like Eddie, it's like Bears, no, knowing, knowing good local shit about Chicago. You know, you just know fucking everything. You drop those hot dog lists, you didn't even break a sweat. 
putting putting together. You probably had 30 fucking places you could go through. And that's just who you are. And I'm throwing the challenge up there, too. Where you, you, It's just part of the fabric of Eddie. Nice guy, good interviewer, there for his friends, loves the challenge, loves the Bears. Like, that's a tier one characteristic of I, Eddie. I remember you said that to me one time. You're like, what? what's what's with that? Like, are you serious? I was like, yeah, I just love the show. You just love it's it. It's a great show. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, the challenge. Any, any Anybody? Anything? And that uh, might be. I was thinking yeah. earlier. Hmm? I said, I'm surprised you didn't pick it earlier. I was going to echo everything Carl said. Like, I was like, once you told me this, I was like, well, Eddie's going to take the challenge. I've never been into it. I know, like, a lot of times Survivor contestants go on it after, um, but not not enough strategy for me to be. Like, the, my, the challenges are quite literally my least favorite part of Survivor. So the show being called The Challenge feels like probably not too up my alley. Yeah, but that's the same. that's the same case for me, too. Like, I don't love the challenges either. It's more about the... I, obviously, the partying is cool, but they've kind of gone away from that. That's maybe why I don't love it as much anymore. But um, it's more so about like the scheming and the you know, West being the fucking doing too much. I don't know. Did you watch it at all, Clummer, or no? So it's like the real world rules challenge. Yes, like, like, correct. correct. Yeah. So like the problem. So I like everyone in high school and college was into the you know real world, and that that had just started um, when I was in high school, more or less. And, uh, but then by the time the challenge came out, I was really too old for it. So like, I it never, I, I mean, I'd watch like, a, you know, an episode and a half or something. And I, I just, I was just too old, but if I was 10 years younger, I'm sure I would have liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. I need one more. So I'll kick off the fifth round right now. Uh, this is tough. I'm in between two again. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go Nickelodeon and I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the one I liked more and that was figured out. She's hot. Yeah, she's hot. What, what, Summer Sanders. Summer Sanders, Summer yeah. Sanders. I That's she's it. still doing stuff. Is she? Yeah, what is she doing? I was probably you don't remember that Tommy, right? No. Figure it out. She's Climber is probably too. too I'm, I'm just too old. You're probably too yeah. old for that. No, but figure it out was legit. Um, as a kid, obviously, if they lost, they got slimed. Whatever. Nobody's really seen it. But uh, if you watch figure it out, you'll appreciate it. Uh, Climber, you're up. She works for the Pac-12 network now. Oh, nice. Uh, I'm going to take a show that probably no one here has seen. It's called Remote Control. It was uh, the first game show on MTV in the 80s. It was hosted by Ken Ober. Uh, his sidekick was Colin Quinn. Um, and it was about pop culture, like movies, TV, music, and it was all like geared to like, you know, stuff from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It came out in the 80s. So it was all like, it felt current. It felt like really hip. It was a really funny show. Um, Ken Ober later would produce Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn, which is a fantastic show on Comedy Central uh, in the early 2000s. Um, but uh, it was it, Adam Sandler, I think, made his like TV debut on Tough Crowd, on, um, excuse me, on uh, Remote Control. It was just a really funny, well done show. It lasted for a few years, um, but uh, like if you're my age, you loved it. Yeah, I, I, but if you're younger, you you probably never heard of it. No. I've never heard of it. I, I've heard of it. I've never think. seen it though. Heard of it, never seen it. Anybody? Very funny, very entertaining, very good show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You know, the peak, in my opinion, the peak of MTV, they had, it was almost all music videos, but every once in a while they come up with this show and the shows were, were like, were legitimately entertaining. All right. Well, it sounds like you're on an island here, Clummer, but I'm sure someone That's will fine. appreciate it that listens. Nothing to do there. Yeah. Tommy, you're up. This, this sucks. I got, I got like three or four. I'm deciding between, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Fuck you, Tommy. It's a new age, it's a new age one. Uh, I just I don't I remember it being a big deal when it came out, but that might have just been because I was in literally fifth grade when it came out. So I remember being like, "Oh, this is awesome!" Uh, Jeff Foxworthy, yeah, uh, very funny stand up. One of the most hilarious stand up specials of all time just came out earlier this year on Netflix. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just think it it's it's a funny concept for a show, a kid versus an adult. Uh, and it's it's one I watch, and I would feel like a fraud taking one that I haven't watched. So I'm gonna go. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? And catchy jingle. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Big one, big fan of this, huh, Dave? I was, yeah, I would watch it, and but I was more teenage, a little older. So all that all that knowledge you learn when you're a fifth grader was still a little more fresh in my brain. But I understood the premise. The shit you learn in fifth grade, you forget about 
as time goes on because it's just useless information, you know. So, of course, the fifth graders are going to win a decent amount, you know. But it was a good yeah. show. Yeah, I liked it. That was going to be my next pick. So I got to scramble a little bit. But um, yeah, I think yeah, I think it's fifth rounder for the fifth grader. So it's, it's it's the right place. Good value there. Yeah, I'm interested to hear what you were between. So we'll talk about an honorable mentions. But um, yeah, that, that's decent. Uh, Dave, you're up. I don't want to do this because it's a fucking. You're gonna yell at me, Ed, but I'm gonna, not yell at me. But I'm gonna go with Top Chef. Oh. Still going strong. We're friends with uh, season 15 winner, Chef Joe Flam. Shout out Rosemary down in the West Loop over towards me a little bit. You were across the street from it when you were. You on, ever Tommy. watched an episode of Top Chef? I've watched many episodes. Many. I've watched. Uh, it's on NBC. No, it's not. ABC. I always mix them up. It's on Bravo. Bravo. It's on Bravo. So I've seen no, I've seen it. I've seen it enough to draft it. Okay. But it What's the format? It was <laughs> it was either that or another Nickelodeon show for me, and I didn't want to double dip in Nickelodeon shows. So I'm gonna go with Top Chef. <laughs> I never got into the the food cooking shows. My dad this this, no, this is how I watch it. My dad watches the food network and all the food cooking channels like like crazy. Like Every one of them. So anytime it was on, I was like forced to watch it when I lived with my dad. I wonder if that's just going to come at a certain age where you just start watching a ton of like National Geographic history channel. And I've gotten to that point. Dad to watch this. Like if, if I'm falling asleep at night, it's not to like sports center. Now it's like to planet Earth and shit like that. So, yeah, yeah there, it does get to that point. I've never seen it. Uh, but shout out to Joe. Um, any top chef climber? You, you sitting there? You getting some tips? Yeah, I mean, not 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 really. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of food shows I'll watch once in a while. It's not bad, uh, just not 100% for me. But uh, there's certainly a lot worse programming out there. No, that's fine. That's a, that's, a, that's a solid pick. Okay. Top Chef is off the board. Carl, who is Mr. Irrelevant? Um, I I was like, I've been kind of waiting to draft this show. And I'm just like, I, I was going to take the Amazing Race if it was available because it's, a, it's more significant and cultural and popular and all that stuff. So now we're here, Mr. Irrelevant, and I just I can't I can't close the draft without one of us taking Win Ben Stein's money. It wasn't like on that <laughs> long. It's just a great show. Ben Stein was awesome. Was that on Comedy Central? Was awesome. Yes. Yeah. He was so dry, so funny, and it was almost impossible to beat Ben Stein. And that was cool because Ben Stein was in a lot of very popular movies and was a was a popular guy as a child growing up and seeing him. And then as it like. It's like, oh, that guy is on Comedy Central. It's like, oh, it turns out that guy's super fucking smart. Like, I don't know what his background is. He obviously went to one of those Ivy League schools and was like an economics advisor and he probably worked for a president or something. And it's like, oh, no, the teacher from Ferris Bueller is actually turns out to be like the like that's (laughs) part of the funny thing of him being cast in all these roles that it actually is exactly who he is. Win Ben Stein's money. I remember it. You did a fist pump, Clemmer, Clemmer. It's a great pick. Uh, it was one of the ones I was deciding between uh, before I picked uh, remote control. Um, ben Stein, like you said, did he work? He worked for a president. He worked for Nixon, I believe. Um, and he, uh, he he's a really bright guy. I remember Jimmy Kimmel was like the host of that show. Yes. You know, so you had Jimmy Kimmel back when he was funny. Uh, and you had Ben Stein, uh, this like bizarre character. It, it was a really good show. Um, uh, one of the Comedy Central's like better shows in the late nineties. Um, you know, they, they were really touting. They didn't have as, as much programming. I guess don't have any programming now. Now it's all repeats. But um, a really good show. Great pick. Really unusual, interesting game show. And Ben Stein was just really odd character. Great, great selection. Ben Stein's life is very odd. If you are bored, when I look at Wikipedia on him. It's very bizarre. Hmm. It, it really is. He worked for Nixon and Ford, and I, I don't want to. Seven hundred fifteen episodes. Did you like him God in the damn. mask? Wow. I was a Ben Stein guy. That can't be right. 715? 715? 715. It's more than Babe Ruth home runs. Uh-huh. Yeah. That man gave away a Holy lot of money. shit. Yeah, because they must he just must have done it like eight months a year. Though. He wasn't even that old when, I mean, he's 77 now. I would have guessed he was way older. Yeah, right? That's a yeah, good point. Yeah, you think he was like what, late 50s when the show was on. He looked like he was in his late 60s. Easy. Right. Yeah, he did. Uh, all right, I'll run it through. We'll do honorable mentions. We'll get out of here. Uh, Eddie, Jeopardy, Deal or No Deal, Supermarket Sweep, The Challenge, Figure It Out, Clemmer, Survivor, American Gladiators, Double Dare, The Amazing Race, Remote Control, Tommy, The Price is Right, P. 
Pyramid, Cash Cab, The Weakest Link, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, White Sox Dave, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, American Idol, Legends of the Hidden Temple, Fear Factor, Top Chef, Carl Family Feud, Wheel of Fortune, American Ninja Warrior, Stump the Schwab, Win Ben Stein's Money. Um, all right. Honorable mentions. Um, what were you between, Tommy? All right. So, I mean, just because it is a little more of a competition show, I like America's Got Talent a lot, um, but it lacks really any character. Like, there's nothing. It's yeah, a rip it's off. Just, yeah. Yeah. It, it is just entertaining because it's cool to see people be talented, but nothing really like super memorable from it. Uh, I was taking The Apprentice because just you're fired is such an iconic catchphrase. And True. it is the only game show that's had its host become the president. So I feel like you got to go points for that. Uh, but I just never really watched it. So I would feel like a fraud taking it. Uh, I had, I don't know if anyone's heard of watch this show. Does anyone remember Moment of Truth? No. It's, no. I feel like it I do. Was, it was one season, uh, maybe ABC. It is the most painfully awkward television show of all time where it was one person hooked up to a live. Yes, detector. I was I was oh. going to ask because I couldn't think of the name of the show. Yes, 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 I, yes. I just yes. watched back highlights yes. today where there's one where it's like a girl's ex-boyfriend asked the girl, like, uh, would yes. you rather marry me than your current husband? And she's like, yes. And like admitting to like stealing money from her old job. Like that literally, mm -hmm. they aired a, a warning. The host was like, we thought about not airing this episode because it was too real. And I personally do not want to air it. It's the most uncomfortable thing I've ever been a part of. Like there were, it, I think it only lasted one season because it was just so awkward. <laughs> Dude, uh, it was so perfect idea for a television show though, but it got way too personal. Like everybody's, everybody's lot. skeletons were coming out of the closet. I couldn't think of the name of the show. I tried Googling it real quick right before we started. And then I just it slipped my mind, but <laughs> Yeah, like they'd have a husband and a wife on, and one of them, yeah. hey, have you ever uh, cheated on me? And it's like, no. And the thing would be fucking going crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, this is so awkward. That's, I, that's a yeah. great call right there. It's not memorable enough to, I think, have as a pick, but like, what? Uh, like, it, I would like to rewatch all the episodes, probably. Like, <laughs> I feel like it's probably a good, like, drunk or high watch, probably. It's one of those, like, I don't think I could get through it. It's just so awkward. Yeah. You know, you're like looking away from the TV. But yeah, it, it was. It's tough. That's tough. Yeah. Um, and then last one I had maybe was not crazy, about, but wipe out kind of like American Ninja Warrior. But yeah, aliens being bad. If I had to take it, I would have. But uh, I'm happy with my five. That's good. My, I know I'm going to get crucified for not going with guts over or figure it out. That's that was going to be my next pick instead why, of why? top chat. I think people just guts is more like oh guts. You don't win a sick. cash prize. You win an aggro, Craig. Yeah, that I'd best say, trophy piece in sports. of the rock. Dude. Pretty sick though. Well, I mean, if you want to do a trophy <laughs> draft, you want to do a trophy draft. We can do a trophy draft, and <laughs> and, and I think there's plenty of trophies to do a trophy draft on. I think you're right, but you get a piece of the rock. Yeah, I just watched figure it out more, and but. Lori Guts Beth, was did you, uh, did you have a crush on Lori Beth Lindberg? Uh, Lori Beth Denberg. Denberg. Uh, I can't say that I did, Mike. I okay. can't say that I did. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what she's up to yeah. for her. Um, what else? Uh, Hollywood Squares. I mean, that was like a... Those are the only two left on my board, and what? I never watched Hollywood Squares. I Bro, just threw it on there in case I needed something. Clever, which which one is big big money, big money, big money, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy? Stop. That's a uh, pressure of luck. That, oh, that's a great luck. game. Yeah, that, mm. That was a very good game. Yeah, they, they redid it uh, a couple of years ago. I think Elizabeth Banks was the host. Um, but we know it from the you know you know from the eighties. It was on for a few seasons, and yeah, it was a very it was a good game show as well. Mm -hmm. uh, then I had Big Brother. Uh, I just haven't seen it much. And uh, Silent Library. I don't know. I just want to give it a shout out. What a weird show on MTV. <laughs> That's a good call. Yeah, and then Beer Money. <laughs> yeah, Beer Money is our local one. It's not local though. They like all Chicago. have them because I talked sure. to Smitty about this. So they'll have like a Philly Beer Money and New York Beer Money, whatever. Such but a yeah, Luke such, Stuckemeyer. Such yeah. a, what a name. <laughs> and uh, what's her face? Who? What's her? Face? What? What's her name? Kelly Kroll used to host it. There was there was one clip. I was watching a rerun of it, and Kelly Kroll was hosting it, and this dude was fucking hammered. And this is back in like 2017 or 18 when the Sox were really bad. They were interviewing a dude at Cork and Care, wherever it was. And this dude was just trash. And he goes, who was the AL 
or the White Sox MVP in the 2005 World Series. He's like, I don't fucking know. Like, this team fucking stinks. 40 and 67. Are you fucking kidding me? And he's just like rambling on about how bad the current team is and not answering any questions. I've blogged it a couple times. But great, great rain delay TV. <laughs> I love that show. Clemmer, anything? Yeah, uh, a few. Uh, win, lose, or draw. Uh, this was a show on the 80s. Basically, it was like Pictionary with celebrities, and you'd have like a, a regular person you were playing with. You know, obviously, just drawing it out. You had to guess what it was. It was a fun show. Uh, but one that I really, uh, I'm bummed I didn't pick was The Gong Show. This was a show in the 70s and 80s where it was hosted by Chuck Barris, and um, you had three celebrities, and then people, it was almost like a talent show. People would come on and try to like, um, like show their skill, juggling, stand-up comedy, whatever. And if they sucked, any of the celebrities could hit this gong and they had to leave the stage immediately. Um, and Chuck Barris was a really odd guy. He claimed he was uh, in the CIA. And George Clooney's first movie is Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which is the George Bar- uh, the Chuck Barris novel. It's what it's based on. It's his story. So uh, it's really interesting stuff. The gong show is a really bizarre uh, game show with an even more bizarre host. Hmm. Gong show. Sounds interesting. Carl, then last year, you got anything just, else? Clemmer, do you want to, any interest in spending some time in Chicago? <laughs> like like working with you, bud. Like like the knowledge you're, you're pouring out of here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it looks cold, but I've never been. I always hear like Chicago's a really fun city. I've never been. I'd love to go someday. We'll have to get you out here, Clemmer. Well, uh, maybe for uh, maybe for a Bulls game, you and Dave can you could show them some things about the NBA. Uh, Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. And lacrosse. Uh-huh. Um, all right, then. Uh, thank you, guys. Tommy, your, your review of spending uh, an hour and 15 minutes with Clemmer in a box? Lovely. I mean, I, I'm still mad that uh, he took Survivor from me. I'm not sure we'll ever recover that. But it, it is good to know that he's a Survivor fan. Um, <laughs> so it redeems him being a Meth fan a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, it's a little bit warm in here. Other than that, um, I think we have a real bond now that will never be broken. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you everybody for listening. That's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back next week with the draft, obviously. Uh, We'll see you then. Go watch the most dangerous game show. Last thing. Go watch uh, Tommy. Good luck. I don't know what happens, but I hope you win. I don't Um, even know. I have no clue what happens. No. Um, All right, then. That's it, everybody. See you.